So 90% of acne sufferers said that the condition had an impact on their daily lives and 63% said that it had affected their self-confidence. So in a picture perfect Instagram world where you base yourself a lot for your work, do you think people are made to feel embarrassed about their acne? Yeah, I think that it started to change a little bit now and I think attitudes are changing, but I think for so many years, possibly only up until like the last year, people just thought that Instagram and social media wasn't a place that you could show your acne because everybody on there is so flawless, everybody just looks glowing and they've got all the nice Instagram makeup and and there just was a, a severe lack of honest natural posts. Um, and also not to defend that because obviously I'm trying to show people like what I look like without makeup and like the scars and the marks that I have from acne but in one sense I think social media did come it was like an escape route for people so people that do have acne and they hate looking in the mirror and seeing the spots and the marks it's so easy these days to put makeup on put a few filters on and put a picture perfect photo on Instagram and then you it kind of lets someone feel better even though going forward it's not really better because it's technically lying to yourself but it to defend it a little bit it's nice that people have had that option if they want to show a more airbrushed version of themselves to the world but I do think that is changing now I think that people are finding people with acne and skin conditions on Instagram that are being quite open and people are realizing okay, if I can be open about mine, I can actually connect with people in the same position as me and we can talk about treatments and, and how we're all feeling. Yeah, and I think for so long, there's been so many misconceptions about acne and people may still believe those myths, such as it's about being dirty or things like that. So I think actually opening up and having these conversations is so important to actually get to the root cause as well because there are actually yeah. certain reasons why people do suffer with acne and it can be an underlying health condition. It's nothing really to do with your hygiene. But I mm -hmm. think when you don't see it enough, when you actually do come across photos on Instagram of bare skin, it can be quite unusual. Definitely, yeah. I think people think it's associated with younger people and it's something that you'll grow out of in your in your early 20s or teens even and that's just not the case now like this adult acne is getting such a big thing and I, I think that is probably a topic like even away from this it's another thing you could explore as to how come adult acne is growing so much now because it I know that when my, my parents were younger adult acne wasn't really a thing then but it is now so obviously it's something to do with lifestyle and maybe to do with our bodies that has led that to grow as well but there's so many things that people just aren't aware of and they'll just sometimes people will view someone with acne and they think oh they mustn't be using a very good like skin cleansing regime or they must have a really bad diet and it's just so not the case anymore did you get a good reaction when you first put out these real photos on instagram yeah um, i did it was really positive um, and so I try to do them quite often, like a couple of times a month, I will try and do a comparison picture to what I look like when I've got all my makeup on um, and then when I've stripped it off. Um, the reaction is, is positive and I feel like every time I do it, the, people are always really thankful and they're always like, I, I didn't even know really that you suffered um, so badly or used to suffer really badly as well. And it's nice to see that even though mine is kind of under control now, I still suffer from marks and scars, which to me is just equally as confidence like ruining it as acne was for me back then as well. And um, one thing I do notice is I do get quite a lot of comments from people and they'll say things like, oh, you, like you're beautiful in both if, if I'm showing like half face makeup, half face acne. Um, like you're beautiful and blah 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 and if you read my caption I'm trying to say that I, I know that and that's the message that I want other people to believe so I still think that people when I put the pictures out people are thinking that I'm doing it as a bit of like I, I feel really bad still about my skin and 
I don't know, that's not the message that I'm going for. So it is a little bit mixed. Overall, the, the response is positive, but some of the responses will be a bit like, don't ever feel bad. Like uh, it's be beautiful and both. And it's like, I know that's what I'm trying to get out so that other people can know that. Like I spent years convincing myself that and it's only now that I feel I'm in the position where I can be like, yeah, I, I don't wear makeup on most days. And this is what my skin is like. It's fine. Deal with it. I want everyone to see it. Um, but I think since I've started to do these posts where I just share my, my face and my skin just raw, the amount of people that just reach out to me in DMs and are just so thankful and, and ask me then for tips and it just connects like a bit of an acne community. And that's something that I never had a few years ago because I didn't put this type of content out there. So it's something that I wish I'd done a lot earlier. Yeah, that's great. And equally, you probably actually followed a few people that were going through the same thing, but because they weren't sharing it, you wouldn't have known. And that just yeah. has so many feelings of loneliness. Yeah, because I just, I didn't want people to know that, that I had bad skin. I just, I mean, obviously, if people that would meet me in real life would see it. But then I would always like that there was a there was a community online that followed me and and didn't really know that and I, I was quite happy with that for a while but then it just got to the point where I just thought it's it's actually tiring like especially now that there's things like Insta stories where you talk to the camera on a daily basis and I didn't want to be putting makeup on every day to to be showing like my real life and that's when I thought this is when I'm going to be a lot more real about it I'm going to talk about my journey and open up share the things that have helped share the things that haven't and yeah it's 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 been really positive and I think it's just give a lot of other people a kind of like the confidence to to do it themselves as well how did you get to that point of feeling self-confident where you could wear makeup was there a lot of psychological work on yourself or did it come when your acne did improve? So I will be completely honest, it did come when it started to improve. Um, not fully, but when, when it wasn't so angry and red and I knew that if I put the camera on my skin, it wasn't like, whoa, it, it was just like, oh, okay, yeah, I've got breakouts and my skin is far from perfect, but it's real and this is, this is how it is. I did feel better then, um, but I guess when it was really, really bad, there wasn't things like Insta stories around then. So whether I would have done it then or not, I'm not sure. Um, but I think it was as well that there's, um, I used to watch YouTube videos from a girl called um, My Pale Skin, um, M Ford, and she used to have acne quite severe. And I used to be really, I, I used to be really inspired by her confidence. She would just put YouTube videos up when it was really at its, at its worst. And I just saw all the support that she had and how like you could still see she was beautiful. Like you, I would never have looked at any of her pictures and thought, oh God, like she's just still just naturally beautiful. And I think it, I just kind of saw her journey and just how people respected her for being so real. And then just thought to myself, look, m mine isn't horrendous anymore, but it is still bad. And I think I'll always, pro well, I'd like to say I won't, won't always have acne, but I do think I'm, I'm probably always going to have it in some form. So I need to just accept it. I didn't really do much work on myself in terms of like psychological things, because I feel like I still have that embedded in me a little bit. Like there'll sometimes be angles where if I've got a window light on one side of me and I've got my phone and then I can see the scars or something, I'll just be like, oh God, and I'll suddenly feel bad about myself again. So there's still a lot of work I need to do on that myself, but I'm getting there. I think people's encouragement and the positive response I've had every time I do it has, hasn't built me up and, and made me a bit more confident. Yeah, and I, that's really interesting to hear because I don't think many people do actually understand the psychological burden that no. there with acne because people think it is just what you see. They don't realise how behind the scenes it can affect you as well. So if you've got any tips for people suffering and there's treatments or little hacks that they can do or do you think it really is getting to the root cause and dealing with whatever it is? I feel that there's so many different types 
of I don't want to say so many different types of acne and and like skin problems but in a way I feel like there is um because I only found out earlier on this year that I have polycystic ovaries and I guess I it was always on my mind that I did I always thought my hormone levels must be out of sync somewhere especially because when I got into like my late 20s I would just get acne all here it was always on my jaw and on my in my chin and my cheeks um so I think it's it's good to try and nail down the reason why you have it but sometimes you just don't know and you can't really find out but if you can see a doctor or a dermatologist there are some tests you can have and it might highlight some sort of imbalance with your hormones it could highlight polycystic ovaries on the other hand it could be diet led um, and I know there's a lot of people that do say oh that's rubbish or, or there's some people that are really strong for it I'm a little bit in the middle with that because I do find that it was a couple of years ago when I was in my mid-20s I decided I was going to eliminate foods so I eliminated sugar and dairy from my diet and my skin did get better it made a massive improvement on my acne so much so that I would tell everybody that acne was down to what you was putting in your body and I still do believe that to an extent because I saw results I was I think I was acne free for about 18 months but then it did come back and I don't know why because I was still sticking to the same diet so I think with me I, it was more deep rooted and whereas it made a good it made an improvement to begin with had I not had a hormone imbalance it might have been you know like for somebody else that might have been all they needed to do but then for me it did eventually come back so it's definitely worth just seeing why you think you've got it and and trying to work on it with that and then obviously it, it is things like deep cleansing your skin, use products with salicylic acid, and it might just be switching your skincare regime that can help. Um, washing your pillows, trying to reduce your stress, um, you know, trying to not to wear heavy makeup or anything poor clogging. There are things like that that can work wonders for people. Um, it just does depend on you and your lifestyle and your diet and your stress and your hormones. So if you've had it, I would say like persistently for like two years, especially if you are going into your like mid twenties, I think it is a good, good shout to see a doctor or a dermatologist just to see if you can nail it down a little bit. Yeah, definitely. I think especially when you're going into your late twenties, um, mid twenties, and you have been suffering for so many years, it can be kind of almost like, why is this not going? Why have I still got it? Yeah. That is one of the misconceptions that it's only associated with teenagers and having bad skin when you're younger. But actually yeah. when you've been dealing with it for so long, it can be really frustrating. And I think that's when it's time to go and see a doctor or a dermatologist because definitely. first line treatment, I think definitely, um, you can change your diet and the skin is the largest human organ and it is connected to the gut which is linked to our hormones and things like alcohol and refined sugars, processed food and things like gluten and dairy, they can inflame your gut and that then has an impact on your skin but then sometimes there's actually just that little more that you need to do whether that's antibiotic creams that you can put on your skin or pain or whatever it is. So did you have any of those treatments, like medications? So the first thing that I went on was antibiotics and the antibiotic creams from the doctors. And that was when I was very young, um, like from being like 16. Uh, no, actually younger than that, I'd say like 14. Um, they, didn't, they didn't really work. I think it, it was when my acne was really severe, so it didn't really work. Um, and then they put me on Dianet, the contraception pill, when I was 16. Um, now that did work wonders, and I've, I stayed on that for a long time, longer than I should have done. So I do try and tell people that that's not good, and you shouldn't be on it for as long as I was. I was probably on it for about 10 years. It's such a strong pill. Um, 
but it did work really well. So we will admit that it, it had great results, which kind of sparked to me that there is something in my hormones because obviously it completely compresses any testosterone um, and, that, and it did work. And then when I knew that I had been on it too long, I switched to Yasmin contraception pill. And that didn't work as well, but it still did keep it a little bit under control. But there were some periods when I was on Yasmin where it would get really bad and it would flare up again. And that's when I considered Roaccutane. Um, I feel in one way that I, I probably should have gone on Roaccutane when I was about 18, when it was at its worst. And I was just masking it with Dianet because I was only going to come off Dianet switch to something a bit more gentle and it was never going to work the same. So I feel like if I had a done Roaccutane when I was a bit younger, it might really have killed the root of my acne. I'm not, I mean, I'm not too sure. I never really did that much research into it. I was just scared of the side effects. So, it, I mean, I saw a dermatologist and he said, you know, I can offer you that and I would advise it if you really want to, you know, a, like a hardcore product to, to get rid of your acne but yeah I just I didn't go for it and then I just stayed on the pill and and then that's kind of the main treatment that I was on for probably like I think it's about 13 years in general that I was on the contraception pill purely for acne and I just think that as much as it did help it masked so many things like it masked the fact that I had polycystic ovaries um, when I was on Yasmin when I decided to do the diet thing and cut out dairy and cut out sugar. And then I realized that that did have a positive impact, but I would never have tried that when I was on Dianet because Dianet just cleared it temp like as a temporary thing. So I do think that for some people, it might be good when you're a lot younger and it is just like a teenage bad spell of skin, but I do think that the pill is quite bad to be on for a long time and many doctors will just give it as a cheap alternative as a treatment when it's possibly not and um, obviously things as well like um, regular like skin peels and like skin treatments at clinics i would I, I would recommend them as well i never had anything like like the laser therapy or anything like that but i think that that's quite good further down the line when you've got scarring so they're things that I do now now that it's calmed down a little bit. Perfect thank you for sharing that and I think there are so many options that you do need to explore if you're suffering and it's not one thing that will work for everyone so it's definitely good to get your research. I can vouch um, for acetone as I'm currently on it but I also had my own concerns about it because it is such a strong drug. It and is, when yeah. people start thinking about going on it, when you read the side effects online, or even from your doctor, they talk about the mental side of it as well. Yeah. And luckily, I haven't suffered with any of that, but there have been other side effects where it completely dries out your skin, your lips, mm. and things like that. So it is a really strong drug. But then I guess you have to weigh up pros and cons. And if yeah. your health is being affected by acne anyway, then maybe it might even improve because you're treating it and then you're going to get more self-confidence. So I think it's very personalised and everyone is so different. But that's yeah. really great advice. And for those who are really struggling now and feel like they're self-confidence at rock bottom and just some small things that they can do such as trying to go out to the shops maybe um, without makeup or little things that they could do do you have any tips for them because I know that if they're really really suffering going and doing the most simple tiny thing without covering their face can seem quite challenging and especially for boys who yeah. can't cover their acne yeah. and makeup it's even harder yeah it is difficult because i've been there myself and this i have memories that stick in my head that still come still affect me now where i used to put makeup on in like in a room that didn't have many windows and it was really dark because I didn't want anything to illuminate it when I'm looking at it and covering it up. Um, 
little things like I would never have layers in my hair because I would always want it to, to be able to cover my skin. There's just so many things that it's just left with me. And I just remember when I was in a really dark place of it. So it is hard to see to see a way out when you are in that mindset. But it's just, just worth remembering that, that you're not alone and it will go. You're not always, it will, even if it doesn't completely shift in years to come, it will get better. And there are so many like excellent products and treatments and things you can do about your diet and your lifestyle that can improve it. And um, so it's just remembering to have that. And also that it is so common now, like it is so much more common than you think. So try, try to find some confidence in, in yourself and don't cover up every day be yourself with it and if you can do try to join things like acne communities online um, and be a little bit more open about it with people because it is amazing how many people you can connect with that are in the same boat and that just instantly makes you feel like you're not alone because there's nothing worse than feeling like you're the only person with it and I did for ages because none of my friends had it like it was just me and I had lots of different friendship groups when I was at uni, I was meeting loads of different people and nobody else had it, but then I would cover it up so that trying to fool people and thinking that I didn't. So I think the more you do that, the more you will feel alone. So it is best to try and be as open as you can and, you know, accept that it's not your fault that you've got it. It, it is technically like something within your body that give, gives it to you. And I, obviously I'm not a doctor or a scientist, so I feel like I can't say too much on that, but it is something within you that has, that has, has gave you the acne and it's not your fault. And um, so just try to remember that and try to connect with as many people as possible and just realize that it won't be here forever and you're not on your own.